Hey loves, today we're doing a full face of Huda Beauty. You guys know I love doing one brand tutorials and this is actually one of my favorite high-end brands. They make some of my favorite products and they just have a lot of really good stuff in general. So grab a snack, get cozy, and let's do some glam with Huda Beauty. I had my hair out, but it is so hot. I had to put it in a little low pony. But let's start off with some eye primer. I do have a cream eyeshadow palette today, which is interesting, but I'm still gonna do a little primer. This one is just from Rare Beauty. So this is the palette of the day. It's the Neutral Brown Creamy Obsessions palette. And it just looks like this. So apparently these are cream to powder eyeshadows, which is really interesting. I typically don't work with creams, but these look so pretty. So since I just did a little eye primer, I'm gonna take this shade right here to set that down. I believe they're all creams, but this is a setting shade. Mm, that gave a nice neutral Please. let's touch it oh it feels really soft looks good okay now let's go into this cream color right here it's like a soft brown I'm gonna use a smaller brush to kind of define my crease a little bit with this color it's so interesting because I never really use shades like this oh Okay, wait, this color's a lot lighter than I was expecting. So I'm actually gonna just apply it on my lid. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more of like a soft brown, but it's actually a very muted skin tone color. So it could be good kind of just for like all over the lid to brighten. Okay. Oh yeah, see once I actually get past that first layer of product, you can see the color is pretty much, like I said, like a skin tone shade, it's very light. Okay, so I'm gonna just apply that then all over my lid. Let's see how this applies with a finger. It's a nice color to brighten or just to mute out your lids. So let's try that again. Let's go in with this color then here on the bottom and see how that applies. It's kind of interesting because they look like a certain color in the band and then as I apply them with my brush and when I get past like I said that first layer they almost just appear lighter than what they look like originally in the pan so yeah that color is also like just another pretty neutral shade that's what it looks like so it's kind of like a skin tone color again but then once you blend it it's very very neutral if you're like my skin tone let's try the brown now i'm gonna use a different brush this one is a little bit more angled to kind of like something you would use for your eyebrows or for eyeliner but i'm gonna try to kind of like map out my crease a little bit with this darker shade there we go we got some color we're good definitely super creamy just like the name implies and then with a different brush, very lightly, since I have that kind of mapped out, I'm going to use a more fluffy brush to diffuse that out and give it more of a blended look. Okay, now we kind of have this mapped out a little bit. I'm going to just clean up the lid with this muted shade. And I'm using a flat shader brush just so that I can really concentrate that product and carve out the lid a little bit more. I will say though, this formula is really easy to work with. I mean, I don't really have a lot of experience with cream eyeshadows but they do have a nice blend to them. I think the formula is nice. They're not super pigmented though. So if you're looking for something very intense and buildable, I don't think these are it. They're actually really light, but to me, they kind of feel very beginner friendly, just not even beginner friendly, just very user friendly in general, even though it's a cream palette. Very interesting. I don't know how this is gonna look from afar, but I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna do a liner and everything, but I wanna just kinda have that base down first because I am gonna add some glitter. I wanna try to use as many of the shades as possible. So I think now I'm gonna go in with this shade and this color. They're like really pretty frosted metallic shades. I'm gonna just apply that all over the lid. You guys know I love my little glitter pops. And this is pretty. 
because it's subtle, but it still gives it a little something. It's like a peach neutral glitter. And then of course we're gonna add the lighter one right over top. Pretty. What's nice about these shades too is that there's no fallout because they are creams. So it is a very nice formula. It's different for sure. Now let's do some eyeliner and I'm gonna use the darkest color in the palette. I'm taking this really tiny little brush. It's from BK Beauty. This one is the 208 and it's the thinnest little eyeliner brush that I own. But I wanna do a wing to try out this color right here. I have my e.l.f. eye tapes right here, but I think I'm gonna just freehand it today and do no e.l.f. eye tapes. Let's see how it turns out. Start on the outer corner. And then I'm using the end of the top of this crease thing that I have going on as kind of like my guide for the wing. This brush makes it really easy as well because it's so little. So it's not quite black, it's almost just like a very, very dark brown, but I like it. My thing is, since these are creams, I wonder how they would last, especially in the heat and if you have oily eyelids because of this formula. This is the look, I actually really like it. Surprisingly, I was able to work with this a lot better than I was expecting. I was kind of nervous because I wasn't sure how the creams were gonna blend. They're not, like I said, super pigmented though, so it's not a very buildable formula. Let's try out our new mascara. I really wanted this other mascara and they were sold out. I feel like a lot of Huda Beauty stuff, depending on where you get it, like in stores, it might be a little bit more limited because apparently Huda is doing an entire rebrand with this brand which is really exciting because i already love their products but i can't wait to see what she's gonna do next but this is what i was able to get my hands on it is the i don't honestly i don't even know what the exact name of this oh it's the legit lashes mascara it's nice because it's a mini but you actually get like a two-in-one mascara so you get one is supposed to be for length and then the other one is supposed to give you curl and volume so i think for like a mini mascara this is actually pretty good it's a good size and mascara is one of those things that can last you a while so i thought that was like a good deal major volume and dramatic curl and insane length is what this mascara claims i have baby lashes you guys know they're straight they usually don't really withstand a curl unless the formula is waterproof but let's curl them this is a tweezer man lash curler and let's try out this mascara if it looks pretty good i won't do falsies but let's try this side first i like the wand it's very flexible too it doesn't feel super hard Ooh. oh wow this does give length like hello lashes okay wait maybe i won't need lashes today this looks really good not gonna do too much though because the formula feels semi-wet so since my lashes are straight they tend to droop down with mascaras that are very wet so i'm gonna just leave it as is but it looks really good and i love a good little two-in-one mascara so this is fabulous because even though it's mini i feel like you're still getting like the most bang for your buck because you're literally getting two different wands which is nice i think i'm not gonna do any false lashes because one i kind of don't really feel like it but i think this looks really good too i'm gonna do a little bit of the other one this is a more curved wand i'm gonna try this on my lower lashes as well but let's see i like the wands you can really get in there and coat every single lash i really like this actually this is a good mascara i'm impressed legit lashes and is it just me but i really feel like this is a good size for a mini should we leave it no lashes no lashes. All right, let's do the skin then. Now let's go in with the Longwear Eye Pencil. And this one is an extreme black. It's a retractable creamy eye coal. And I actually do really like this one. I do have a dupe for it though from the drugstore. It is the Rimmel Exaggerate Waterproof Eye Definer. I find this to be very similar 
to this Huda Beauty one, but I do like the one from Huda because it is so literally creamy. <laughs> I feel like that's the pattern with a lot of her stuff from her brand, but I love it. It's also extremely black and you don't have to tug at your eye to get that extreme pigment. You might have to reapply throughout the day though. I feel like that is the case with, honestly, the majority of eyeliners. Like they're not gonna just stay on your waterline all day. Like I've never found an eyeliner where I literally don't have to touch it up, not once. But that's why I said the Rimmel one is a nice alternative if you don't wanna splurge. But this is a nice eyeliner though. I'm gonna use it to tight line my upper lash line. Even though I'm not wearing any, oop, I just blinked and messed messed that up a little bit. But I was going to say, even though I'm not wearing false lashes, I still like my top lash line to have that dark base. Because it kind of just makes your lashes also look a little bit like fuller from the root. Let's fix that. Hold on. What's nice is that these are cream, so they should kind of blend away really easily if you do make a little mistake. I'm just using a clean brush. You could even use a q-tip as well and then i'm going to take a little bit more of this neutral eyeshadow here and kind of use it to like blend that away let's move into the skin now huda beauty does not have a setting spray i think they used to once upon a time but i haven't seen it so i'm just gonna go straight into primer i'm pretty prepped i just applied moisturizer before getting started and it has been like absorbed into my skin at this point right now but since we don't have any fallout on our face it's nice because I don't need to use any wipes or anything, but for primer, I have the Glowish by Huda Blur Jam Silicone Free Smoothing Primer. I have actually never tried anything from this line specifically to Huda. Let me know if you guys have, but I've heard really good things about the Glowish line. And then this is what the packaging looks like. It comes in a little jar and then you get the spatula with it. And then this is the actual primer. Interesting. It doesn't smell like anything. Oh wow, the texture is interesting. So it kind of goes on like a silicone kind of paste, but it's very fast absorbing. I love that it doesn't have any fragrance to it. That's really nice. But it is very smoothing, I will say. I need this on my forehead. It's smoothing, it does absorb any excess shine on your face, but it doesn't feel overly matte. It feels very natural, like it has a natural finish on the skin, which I personally really like. The texture is different, but I like how quickly it absorbs into the skin and how soft and smooth everything looks. Now for foundation, I picked up a brand new one, but this is actually one of my favorite stick foundations. I hope, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with this brand. Like if they're going to discontinue this and maybe come out with something different, but this, I hope it stays because it's such a good stick foundation. I think this one's even better than Hourglass, but this is the Faux Filter Skin Finish Foundation. And I have this one in 250G Cheesecake. I purchased another one just because... My other one's probably really old and expired and I, I love this foundation. So I'm like, if they do get rid of it, let me at least have two more backups. So I have this shade and then I got the shade 300N Latte just because I got a little tan. So I'm like, in case one is a little bit too light, maybe I can make it work. But how satisfying is that? It's like a fresh foundation. So what's nice about this is that it gives you a soft matte finish. The coverage is buildable. It's just a beautiful, blurring, creamy stick foundation. Again, with the creamy, yes, this foundation is super creamy. And it's nice because most stick foundations are just very thick and heavy and they're matte and they look cakey, but not this one. This one is so beautiful. So let's see how this color is. I might add a couple stripes of the 300 shade, but I think 250 was typically my go-to. It just morphs into your skin in the most beautiful way. It gives coverage, but it just looks airbrushed and stunning. And anytime I want to use a stick foundation, this is my go-to because it just looks so good every time. And I love the way this just truly morphs to look like your skin, but 20 times better because it's airbrushed and gorgeous. Ooh, I think a thunderstorm is happening. Does anybody else love thunderstorms in the summer? It's like one of my favorite things. It's just very like cozy and comforting. I don't know, I can't explain it. Maybe that's weird, but I love summer thunderstorms. Is this too late? I don't want to have ghost face again like I have in my last couple videos that I've been 
not really on point with my foundation shade. I think this is like a smidge too light for me because I recently got a tan. But let's try 300. Ugh, I really hope they don't get rid of this foundation. It is just everything. And I feel like a lot of people don't really talk about this anymore. But oh yeah, I think 300 would have been like perfect, perfect. I typically wouldn't actually also add this much foundation but it is more forgiving where you can do it just because of how amazing the formula is i think 300 is actually perfect for tan but oh yeah that looks beautiful the coverage is pretty buildable i would say if you can control it depending on how much you use so for me this right now is definitely more on the fuller coverage side because i added quite a few stripes but it's still feels nice on the skin now we have some bronzer and blush actually let's do the blush first and then bronzer and then we'll do concealer so for blush these are the new blush filter liquid blushes i got black cherry and peach sorbet actually very excited about this formula because i don't think i've ever tried huda beauty blushes before but i can imagine they're good i think Hoda just kills it with the complexion products. Like it's just one of those brands that just does complexion right. And they have a good bronzer too, which I'll talk about in a minute. But we're gonna try two different shades. These were the only two that were available, but honestly, they're super cute. So let's start off with a black cherry. I love the packaging. I love how it's the color of the blush. I wish more brands would do this. It's one of my favorite things. Should I put this directly on my face and then blend? Yes. Oh, there's the thunder. There's just nothing cozier than a summer thunderstorm. Let's blend that out. I typically don't like to apply this directly to my skin, but look at that blend. And I think colors like this sometimes can be really intimidating, but they're actually, I think, very universally flattering. Like these kinds of colors are stunning. That's really pretty. I'm gonna add more. That actually blended beautifully. I'm gonna start from the back of my hand first just to see how that looks too. From here and then with my brush. This is a Fenty 125 face brush, by the way. Oh, definitely buildable. <laughs> Super buildable, that's pretty. Let's try the other color in Peach Sorbet on the other side. Let's blend this in with another Fenty brush. These are more on the matte side and they give almost like a stain effect to the cheeks, but it's liquid. You can definitely keep it very light and just give yourself a, a light wash of color or you can build it up and give yourself a little bit more, which is nice. I think the formula is, it's unique. It feels liquidy, but then it gives you kind of a perfect amount of pigment with almost like a stain, but better because it's a stain, but it has a lot of pigment, buildable pigment. Love, I really like both of these shades. Peach Sorbet, it's very pretty. And then Wild Cherry, or Black black Cherry, Black Cherry. Black Cherry is gorgeous. I think this could actually be, like I said, a very universally flattering color on a lot of different skin tones. Let's move into bronzer. This is another one of my favorite products. It's the Tantor Contour and Bronzer Cream. This is such a good cream bronzer, very underrated. And I have this one in the shade Fair. Oh my God. Don't mind the noises. What else is new? <laughs> but this is a gorgeous cream bronzer. I like this color too because it's like a true brown on my skin. It doesn't pull very orange, so I love it. I'm going to apply this around the perimeter of my face. That's why I wanted to do... Oh, I just got that all over my hair. I wanted to do the blush first because I don't really like to do too much bronzer on my cheeks along with the cream blush because sometimes it can look a little bit muddy. So I'm just going to do a little bit right around my temples. And then I just use my foundation brush to blend around the edges so that there's no harsh lines. Just like that. It gives the perfect amount of color. I'm going to add a little bit right down at the sides of my nose. So there you can see like that true color. It's really pretty. Now let's add concealer. This is another really good product. I actually haven't used this in a little bit, but I do remember loving this concealer. It's the Faux Filter Concealer. I have this one in Vanilla Swirl. Medium to full coverage. 
similar to the foundation where it does have a soft matte finish. This is a little light, but it's fine. But it's not a dry formula, which is really nice. Like it's just, it's not too thick, but it's also not too thin to the point where it's not gonna cover up anything. Like it definitely is one of those concealers with more coverage. It's not too much. I love it. They also have a color corrector. I'm not really super into color correcting, but from what I've seen, the formula is very similar to the concealer. So if you like the concealer, you're going to like the color corrector. Wow, the complexion looks really flawless. I truly have no complaints. The blushes blended also a lot better than I was expecting. Sometimes with blushes like that, that kind of remind me of a cheek stain. Sometimes they can look splotchy, but this one is gorgeous and there we go the concealer the foundation they just morph together so beautifully i love it i love it i love it i love it let's set everything i'm gonna go in now with the easy bake setting powder this one is in pound cake this is a staple from this brand so many people love this powder i really love it honestly i have a couple different shades in this and i think it is one of the best most blurring intense mattifying powders and i say intense because it is a pretty heavy powder like if you're into very light natural makeup you're probably not going to like this and if you don't like matte products you're probably not going to like this as well but i just realized i have a foundation under my nail and it looks like literal dookie like it actually looks like caca so I'm going to use this first on my under eyes and then I have another powder for my face. Of course, you guys know I always got to do a little double powder method. The packaging is nice. You get a net so you can kind of just press your sponge or your brush in to get the product so you're not using an excess amount. This one still has a fragrance, but she did release this powder with no fragrance. So if you know, you know, because... This powder is intense, but I personally like the way it smells, but you do have to be mindful of that. But like I said, now we have a fragrance-free option, which is really nice, but I love this powder. Mm -hmm. I like the Cherry Blossom shade. If you want something more brightening, I would say go with the light pink shade. If you want something maybe a little bit more neutral, but still slightly brightening they do have a translucent one i like the pound cake color too so i love that color so much that i ended up getting the easy bake and snatch pressed brightening and setting powder so i'm going to use it to set my makeup and then i'll add a little bit to my under eyes for a little extra brightness not that i really need it but just to try it it doesn't feel as matte as the loose or yeah there's the loose powder this one feels like it has a little bit more of a natural ish finish this also is not going to add any more coverage it is truly a setting powder so it's very finely milled when you touch it it doesn't feel heavy at all it actually almost has like a luminosity to it which is interesting because the loose powder is so matte oh yeah look at that See how it has a little bit of like that very natural luminosity to it. You might be able to see it a little bit in my forehead as I move it. Like it's set, but it's not completely matte. It's almost like a satin powder. It's pretty, but I think it depends on what you're looking for in a powder. I'm going to add a little bit with my puff to my under eyes for some brightness. Definitely does brighten for sure. I like this side more though without the bright under eye but I'm gonna just do it anyway because I wanted to test it I think it's interesting though how the powder is not as matte as the loose powder but I do like it I think it depends on the look that you're going for everything feels really soft though and let's wipe off the foundation in my hair now for lip combo i'm going to start off with the lip contour 2.0 pencil in honey beige i tried another huda beauty lip liner it was a little bit lighter than this one and i did really like it i can't remember how long lasting these are but i do remember they had a good formula I do like this color. It's kind of like my lips, but a little bit darker. I do like this formula. 
for my skin tone i think this is nice for maybe those like very natural simple everyday kind of makeup looks just to give your lips a little contour there's tons of other colors though but i really like this one oh i love because it's just like i said very your lips but better it gives it a nice little pout but it's not too much now we're going to add some gloss these are new the faux filler glosses i have tried these and the color that i have is in honey these are for a very specific group of people if you like a thicker very pigmented gloss it's not very sheer it is very shiny but it's thicker so if you do too much it can be a little gloppy on the lips little sticky but it's still gorgeous i like the pigment that these have because you don't really have to go in with a lipstick or anything over top like these whatever pigment you see in the packaging is what you're going to get on your lips and this is a really pretty shade so let's top it off you see like it is intense but the packaging also i love it has a thicker pointed doe foot and these smell so good it's it's a little sweet it's a little vanilla but it has this kick to it that i cannot put my finger on what it smells like but it smells like something that i used to smell or that my mom had when i was younger and i just cannot put my finger on what it is but it smells really good now we definitely have to try out the mascara on the lower lashes i'm in love with it by the way that like i usually don't really obsess over mascaras a ton especially high-end mascaras or just in general because my lashes are not the best but wow, like I actually love the way the eyes look. I'm gonna take a little bit of, let's go in with a little bit of this brown with some of that lighter shade. You know what, no, let's do the marble color right here actually. Let's, let's try that out on the lower lash line. I'm just gonna very lightly just diffuse that under there. And then the best part about thunderstorms is the sunshine that comes after. Literally my favorite thing. Okay, let's go in with a little lower lash mascara. And then I think we're all done with this look. And I actually really like it. I'm going to have to try out the other mascara. She has another one. It's a, uh, ew. I think I put a little too much lip gloss on. Um, it's like in a pink packaging. And if that one is as good as this one, then I'll be impressed. Let's add a little liner to the waterline. And I think we are done. So this is the completed look. And I have to say, I am so excited to see what Huda Beauty does with her brand. Because I think right now her brand is flawless. She has so many great products. And there's a lot of gems that I think are totally worth splurging over. So let's do a quick little recap. Starting off with the Creamy Obsessions eyeshadow palette. So this actually performed a lot better than I thought it was originally. I thought these were going to be kind of difficult to blend and I just thought it was going to look muddy and not cute, but I actually love the look and I like the formula of these. I think there's pros and cons to the palette. One of the biggest cons is that it's not a super buildable pigmented formula, but it is user friendly. I love the fact that there is no fallout and I think they're very easy to work with. So I do like the palette. I don't think it's 100% necessary unless you're into a cream formula and you wanna add this to your collection. The mascara is my absolute favorite thing that I tried out today. Honestly, this is beautiful. I love the way this makes my lashes look. I love the formula of it. I like both ends. I think it's a really great mascara 10 out of 10 no complaints as far as the complexion i will say i think this primer did really make my skin look super smooth and the foundation just applied really nicely over top so no complaints with this i'll definitely keep using it i love the foundation i think this is my favorite product from huda beauty hands down i do love the concealer as well it has a good blendable formula it has a nice coverage i think this is really pretty and it looks very smooth on the under eyes especially when you pair it with the loose powder this is truly airbrushed flawless soft matte porcelain skin in a container i love it the easy bake powder is interesting because by the way my lip gloss it is pretty sticky so the lip gloss is not my favorite it's pretty and i do like it i'll continue using it but i can't say that it's my all-time favorite formula the easy bake and snatch powder was interesting because it actually had a satin finish and a bit of a luminosity to it which i did not expect but if i had to choose between the loose and the press i'm gonna stick to the loose because i just think it's so flawless the press powder is nice i'll continue using it but i can't say that it's gonna be like my new go-to but it is pretty i love the tantor bronzer cream this is such a good cream bronzer i also love the liquid blushes these 
blended beautifully. I love the pigment. What I also ended up doing was I just took my brush with whatever product was left over and I kind of just added a little bit of whatever was left on the brush and just emphasized the blush a little bit more and it's gorgeous. So both of these, I also love the colors. No complaints, 10 out of 10. I would definitely try out more shades. The lip liner, I am in love with. The other color that I have is Sandy Beige, which is a little bit lighter than this one, but Honey Beige is perfection. I love this. It really does, like it says, it's a lip contour. Like it truly does contour your lips in the most beautiful, natural way. And the formula was really nice as well. It glided on. I think out of everything, like my least favorite product currently, and it's not even a bad product, but it's the gloss. It's just a little thick on the lips. It can be kind of heavy and a little sticky, but I love the colors. I love the way it smells. That's just the only thing. I feel like you can maybe even see it as I'm talking, like it's a little gloppy, which I don't love, but... I do like the colors, it's not my favorite gloss. So, top five, mascara, loose powder, faux filter stick foundation, liquid blush, contour 2.0 lip liner. Those are my top five. So let me know what your favorites are from this brand. Overall, love it. Lots of gems, lots of good products, lots of splurge worthy products. So I would love to know your favorites. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new videos every single week. And I cannot wait to see you in my next one. Bye.